All right, guys. Uh, I'm Troy. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Gem City Bourbon Society. I'm here with uh, Wes tonight from Watershed. Uh, appreciate everybody's um, interest in this tonight. Uh, it turned out to be a great night to do it with all the snow and ice in the ground. Um, Wes is going to take over here in just a second. I just want to share some information real quick. Um, at the end of this, for anybody that's still on and stays on to the end, um, I'm going to raffle off a bottle of the four-year apple brandy. You can pick up at a later date. Um, outside of that, um, we're going to try to go till probably like eight, maybe eight fifteen, eight thirty at the latest. But uh, we don't, we don't. I don't want to keep West too late. If anybody wants to stick around afterwards, we can stick around for a little bit and chit chat. Um, obviously, some of us don't have work tomorrow. Uh, I do, but um, outside of that, um, tonight with your guys' help. We were charged 15 bucks a person. All the all those proceeds was $450 went to uh, the Dayton Autism Society. Um, I appreciate your help with that. We try to incorporate that into every aspect of anything that we do within our group. Um, outside of that, man, I'll turn the floor over to you. Oh, uh, real quick, if you have any questions during the process, you can feel free to speak up if you want to. But... Um, if you'd make you feel better, if you want to just drop them in the chat, I'll keep an eye on the chat and then I can let Wes know uh, when there's a question, Wes, that way you don't get distracted or whatever. But at the end, we'll have a Q&A as well. So, uh, yeah, Thanks, I think guys. it's good we save the Q&A for the end um, and move forward with this. Uh, Troy told me <clears throat> that uh, everybody has the little samples with them and they are labeled one, two and three. Uh, and when we get into the tasting part of it. Uh, I will tell you which one we're going to sample in order. That way we stay in order of proof. So nobody burns their palate out. A um, little bit about me. I'll start off with, I've been with Watershed Distillery um, going on a year now. And uh, I actually got my job with Watershed because I did a TikTok video. Um, I know it's kind of weird, but social media actually kind of proved to be useful. Uh, I didn't want to do TikTok and my mother made me. Um, we argued about it for months. She won as a mother does. And uh, I joined TikTok just to kind of appease her, so to speak. But then I found a lot of bourbon people on there. Uh, I don't know if any of you are part of that bourbon TikTok community, but uh, there's probably about 6,000 plus people across the United States. It's really kind of cool. Uh, it's like a big dysfunctional family, but it's a lot of fun. Um, so Ann Demick of Watershed found my video, called me into Watershed, gave me a tour, and then called me a week later and offered me a job as a tour guide. Uh, now I'm currently sitting with the sales team. So 95% of my job is to be doing stuff with the outside sales team. Um, and then I get to do this kind of fun stuff every once in a while and do tours here and there. So if you ever want to do a tour of Watershed Distillery, Friday nights at 7.30, you'll get me, and it'll be a blast. I promise to overserve you. Uh, so let's jump into Watershed a little bit, and uh, let me give you a little bit of history behind the brand that you're going to be sampling tonight. Watershed Distillery is actually one of the oldest distilleries in the state of Ohio. Uh, awesome Middle West and another company up in Cleveland pretty much opened our doors at the same time during the same year back in 2010. Uh, before it started, uh, Greg was our founder, uh, who is a Columbus native and he went to the Ohio State University. Um, he had gotten back a few years prior from uh, being abroad playing professional volleyball in Appenzell, Switzerland. And he'd worked a few different jobs when uh, he got back over stateside. And he ended up with Pfizer, kind of a, a big name drug company uh, that we all know. And after working there for a while, he really kind of started not to like his job. Uh, the culture that he found over in Appenzell when he was there in a community that is uh, almost 100% by local and uh, everybody's kind of supporting everybody, bartering, working and high level of respect in that community. That atmosphere and everything really stuck with him. So working those kind of jobs that are cold corporate jobs, he just didn't didn't like it. And uh, he and a few friends kind of sat down and game plan to do something different because he really wanted a, a better path. And Watershed Distillery was born out of that. Uh, I don't know if any of you know what it kind of takes to open up a distillery in the state of Ohio, uh, but it's quite a tall order. 
uh, the state of Ohio being liquor controlled as we are, they have their hands in absolutely everything that uh, we do. And they own all the products on the shelves and have say over everything. So for us to be able to open up the distillery and sell in the Ohio market, uh, we had to follow a set of regulations. Some of the big ones were we had to have a federal license to be able to distill. We had to have a lease on the land where we were going to have our distillery. We had to have all of our equipment bought and paid for. And we had to have a product to present to the state of Ohio. Uh, even after having all of that in place, being a fully functioning distillery, and then taking a product to the state of Ohio, the state of Ohio reserves the right to tell you no and put you back to the drawing board with your product. Uh, thankfully, we didn't have that problem. We started off with vodka and gin. And uh, after Greg went in with an hour presentation, they deliberated for about 15 minutes, came back, gave him an approval on those two products and 22 stores to sell uh, in Central Ohio. Uh, fast forward going on our 12th year now, Watershed Distillery is one of the largest, or we actually, I'm sorry, we are the largest producing distillery in the state of Ohio. Uh, and just as of December, uh, closing in the month of December, we are the largest whiskey producing distillery with sales volume in the state of Ohio as well. So we're very happy where our accomplishments have come uh, over the past 12 years. Uh, like I said, if you guys have any comments, <clears throat> Did I have my microphone muted? Oh, okay, no, I thought my microphone was muted that entire time. I was like, oh no. Um, <clears throat> if you have any comments or questions, throw them in the chat box because I am taking a look at it. Uh, what we're gonna start with tonight first, um, all three products are were all brand new products as of 2021. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, 2021. Don't know why that's so hard for me to keep track of what year it is. Uh, but the first one we're going to start off with, uh, I have here, it is our Watershed Distillery, four-year blended uh, bourbon. And this is a product that we came out with last year because in uh, 2020, when we did the batch one of our six-year, which you'll be trying as well tonight, uh, you'll be trying batch two, it went really well. People really like that flavor profile. So we decided to discontinue our old bourbon. And if you see it on the shelves, that's it. That's the last of it. Buy it up if you liked it. Uh, but this one here is a blended bourbon. What it is, it's a straight bourbon whiskey blended with a bourbon whiskey that has been finished in apple brandy barrels. Everything in here is four years old. Hence, we now have a four-year age statement. Uh, and that was one of the driving things that we're trying to go forward with as we grow as a company is to never not have an age statement on our bourbon products. Uh, the second one we're going to try came out the same time uh, in the fall of last year. Uh, this is our bottled and bond. Uh, this is labeled number three for you. Uh, this is not the first bottled and bond in Ohio, but as far as I can tell and from everything I've read, and if anybody has anything different, please speak up. But the first bourbon uh, in the state of Ohio to win a double gold award. Uh, I went out to the John Barleycorn Awards and we took home double gold for that. And we took home gold for batch two of our six year apple brandy finished bourbon. Uh, this one comes in at 120.8 proof, hence why it is going to be the last one on our list. Uh, does anybody have any questions so far? No? Fantastic. All right. <clears throat> so uh, does everybody, did everybody get an email, get a little printout with this sheet? Uh, I think Troy had it and was able to send it out. Troy, did you get one of these out to people? Yeah. So what I did was, is I sent that out yesterday via our chat. So I gave them the opportunity to print it out if they wanted to, or uh, if they didn't, they just didn't print it out. So. Perfect. Um, so what we'll go ahead and do here, uh, if everybody wants to go ahead, pour your first sample. Uh, in the glass um, and give a little nose and uh, throw in just some comments. Tell me what you think about the, uh, the profile you get when you smell this bourbon. Starting with number one, yes. It's 
It smells sweet. Sweet Napoli. Candied almonds. Or fairy. Fruity. Say fruity. Apples. Fruity. All right, I'm treating this as a standard bourbon tasting that I always do. Uh, so just follow along here with me. Uh, most of you probably, or if not all of you, probably know the uh, kind of way to, to taste and smell bourbons. Um, I use kind of little tiny glasses. Uh, I don't really, I like the Glen Karens. I just don't have anywhere to store them. <clears throat> but uh, when you smell your bourbon, uh, if you have it in a Glen Karen, uh, before you smell, blow it out. Uh, and then after you smell it, like we all have, uh, the first drink you want to take is going to be a small sip of it, just enough to swish around your mouth and coat your entire palate. We are shocking the palate. Uh, and then go ahead and drink that. Blow out of your mouth, not your nose. That way we don't... Uh, ruin our sinuses uh, and then go ahead and immediately take your next drink kind of taste on it and uh, tell me what you think of that flavor profile i will not be commenting <laughs> if you guys want to, I, feel free to speak up and just use your microphone for the, those responses. Yeah, Typing might take do. Please do. Uh, I will not be commenting on flavors and stuff like that uh, because, uh, as you know, everybody's palate's different and uh, things I taste you might not taste. Plus, while we're going through this, I don't want to really indoctrinate you uh, into thinking that you're tasting something that you may not be actually tasting by uh, suggestion. Definitely getting some cinnamon and uh, and some um, some pepper as well. Oh, sweet nice. with a little bit of smokiness to it. Mm -hmm. I agree with Troy. It was very sweet, very uh, cakey, like a birthday cake, a little little pound cake or birthday cake in there on the desserty side. I would say. I definitely get the pound cake. That's good. It's <clears throat> good. Vanilla. Def definitely the vanilla. Vanilla, sweet. <laughs> the confectionery flavors, I guess, more on that side of that particular one. The nose was different okay. from the palate, Gossip. I would say. Lighter mouthfeel, too, I would say. Not, not super heavy, yeah. not super sticky to the tongue yeah i was gonna, uh, I was gonna say the same thing a little um like light i don't mean yeah. that way just like me the proof low proof i would say the proof, proof point seems low to me because it it drinks so easily it's an easy drinking summertime whiskey i would say what it reminds me of garage whiskey Correct. we are sitting at this one at a 90 proof there we go so good catch good call yeah, definitely a good one that would be served chilled with in the summertime. And see, this uh, this bourbon is it's basically our everyday bourbon. You can find it on the shelves in every store uh, all over the state of Ohio, and it's right at that uh, uh, forty dollar price range. Liters are fifty. Uh, it's one of those bourbons that it's, I personally think it's really sweet. It's good to drink straight over the rocks uh, if you add a little ice to it mellows it out a little bit more uh, but it's also not a bourbon that i'm upset when my buddies come over and they want to make an old-fashioned out of it or they want to do some sort of cocktail or my buddy who's like hey can i throw uh you know your mictors into uh you know my mountain dew and i'm like no i have something else for you anything else um it's one of, i think it's one of those bourbons it's a very good alternative bourbon can be used in any aspect um with that apple brandy finish, uh, it definitely does help with making some unique cocktails, so on and so forth. But you know, they always say good bourbon makes a good cocktail. So if you are ready, we will step over to the bottled and bond. 
Uh, this is the next one. Most of you know, bottle and bond, there are a lot of federal regulations, just like what makes bourbon a bourbon. You know, you have to follow rules to be able to put bourbon on your label. You have to follow a bunch of rules to put bottle and bond on your label as well. Uh, we follow all those regulations. We Everything you're tasting in this is a 10 barrel blend that uh, was distilled in the same distillery season by the same master distiller at Watershed Distillery. We barreled it at Watershed Distillery. Uh, we aged it in our bonded warehouse. We bottled it at our facility and we bottled it at 100 proof. Um, this hands down for an everyday bourbon is one of my favorite watershed products I've ever tried. And uh, I can't really see it, but I'll turn my computer. I have a full shelf of watershed distillery stuff. Uh, I have batch six of the original bourbon um, that dates way back. And so I've tried a lot of stuff throughout the years from watershed. Uh, this is going to be number three. Um, Bottle and Bond is hands down my, my favorite product out of Watershed Distillery. Uh, a lot of people like, you know, the Nochino finished, a lot of people like the barrel strength, but uh, from my, my palate profile, um, what my palate likes, this Bottle and Bond is fantastic. So go ahead and give it a nose, and uh, I am very curious on this one to hear your feedback. Hey, Wes, are we trying number three or number two? Yeah. Trying number three. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about sorry about the numbers. We um like I had to pour them in the the uh, the plastic cups and I just did it in that order. I didn't we didn't communicate until just a little bit ago about what order they'd be in. So this it should delicious. be one, three, two, correct? Oh, one, okay. three, two is the order we're doing, correct. That is good. Smell pecans. Yeah, definitely. Tastes nutty too. Just a little bit. But very, very smooth. I was, as high proof as it sounds, it, it's yeah. a lot smoother than I expected. I was rather impressed yeah. with the fact that we are drinking a hundred proof bourbon. And it is actually smoother to me than the 90 proof. Agreed. Okay, I would for me, this is actually sweeter and smoother than the 90 proof. I feel like I get a lot of like honey, honeycomb kind of on the nose. Very good. Quite nice. So before we introduce this bourbon, and as you can tell, I have quite a collection, uh, and this is just what I actually keep out on my shelves, but my friends used to come over and uh, they would always tie in to my E.H. Taylor small batch. It's kind of like the, the go-to that everybody wanted, either that or the Weller 107. And when... Watershed released the bottle and bond, and I brought the first bottle back and had my buddies over for the night. This is what they go to every single time they come over. And I'm happy about it because I quite frequently end up with bottles. So I'm not mad about that. Um, and it's easier to replace. But uh, every time I do in person uh, tastings at liquor stores, anytime I do virtual tastings or private tastings for any events, the bottle and bond usually comes out number one on everybody's list. And I think it's well-deserved. Uh, this watershed has definitely done very good stuff. Uh, and this was one of the last bottles that, uh, Andemic did a batch blend for while she was at watershed distillery. Uh, she's now since moved on and gone over to OHLQ with the bio jobs. And she is working to kind of improve the OHLQ brand. So now I'm curious where palate changes are different for everybody. Um, who preferred 
the standard four year blended and who preferred the bottled and bond. This is where you can just put a comment in the uh, chat section. Just let me know. I I only said Apple because I mean it's close. Close for you? Close. I mean, just the finish on the first one. Like if I had new people at my house and the proof being lower, it'd be easy to just slap it on some rocks and just like give it to them and be like, "Hey, give this a go." But then like if you get up in that hundred proof range of of four years, uh, it that finish man can like really scare people away for another few years. So no, I fully agree with you on that. But it seems like majority on here are steering towards um, the bottle and bond. And I see Larry says definitely remind remind of E.H. Taylor. I agree with that. I would agree with that. All right. So the last one we're going to try here. Uh, of course, is number two, and that is the Watershed Distillery Barrel Strength Six-Year Apple Brandy Finished. Uh, this is coming in at 120.8 proof, uh, so I would reshock your palate, even though we've had a couple drinks. Uh, let your palate kind of get used to this one uh, as well, but uh, go ahead and give it a, a nosing. Tell me what you think about... Uh, what you're smelling on the, on the front end of that um, when you give it some good smells. Might have been airing out for a little bit. This may with sound weird, I guess. <clears throat> I noticed it's with all three of them. smells lighter. It does have a very light nose. Still a strong alcohol, but yeah, it's a lot. I, I was expecting it to knock the back a little bit, but it's, it really didn't. Yeah. Well, cheers. I will tell you, right up front on the palate, you are going to get quite a bit of rice spice right up front with that. So be warned. Be ready for it. Because we are a high rye bourbon. It's very odd to be that smooth with that much rye. I agree. Yeah. What'd you say? Yeah, that's what it definitely has a bigger bite. Yeah. What'd you say? 122 proof, 120.8? 120.8. 120. 120.8. For 120.8, bourbon, it drank Butter. easily. Right. Um, definitely get a little bit of that grass. Mm -hmm. A little bit of dry finish, for sure. Yeah. Yes. Well, All right. three of them are surprisingly sweet on the nose and yep. a little sweet on the very first bit. All three of them carried that sweetness all the way through, I noticed. For 121 proof, this is dangerously smooth. I completely agree. I'll okay, tell you what, it. it makes one hell of an old fashioned. Yeah. <laughs> slight, slight smoke for me makes me want some barbecue. Yeah, I agree with that as well. I could go for some for some ribs right now. <laughs> for me, it was like it was the most dry finish of all of them. Yeah, yeah, I would I would agree with that as well. It does it does have a drier finish on the back end. I like that dry finish. You know, almost like a like a sweet corn finish, a little bit. Look, probably a little bit more tannins from the uh, barrel. Extra two years. One hundred percent sweet corn. So, with that being noted about the sweet corn, uh, Watershed Distillery. Uh, as of the beginning of 2021, 
we are actually using 100% Ohio corn in all of our products. Uh, all of our barrels come from Speyside Cooperage in Jackson, Ohio. Uh, all of our apples are from orchards in Ohio. Uh, so the apple brandy that we do, uh, we use all Ohio apples and apple cider. Uh, and then we reuse those apple brandy barrels to finish uh, these off. So these two bourbons that you tried, uh, number one, and number two, uh, are both finished in our apple brandy barrels. Um, let's see. Watershed does a lot with the state of Ohio. Uh, and we try and support other businesses in the state of Ohio as much as possible. So our glass comes from the state of Ohio. Uh, our labels are made by a company uh, called Blue Label. Uh, they are down just outside of Lancaster. And uh, I don't know if any of you have ever had, tried, or heard about our Nochino. Uh, our Nochino is another product that we do. Uh, it's a black walnut liqueur that is a vodka base. And all the black walnuts that we used this past year, all the black walnuts we've always used have been from Ohio and from donations that we've gotten from the community. Uh, and this past year, the Nochino batch that we did, all of the black walnuts came from the Ohio Nut Growers Association. So we partner with as many people in the state of Ohio as we possibly can, giving back um, and trying to promote just So I will go ahead, since we have tried all three, and uh, say, go ahead, after you've tried all three, in the chat section, let me know what your favorite of this evening's has been. Which ones, uh, which one you would recommend for somebody starting out? Which one you would gift to somebody? And which one would you keep for yourself? I like your uh, I like your thought process. Which one would you gift to somebody? <laughs> yep. Yeah, the blended probably is the gift there of all of them, right? Because it's it's easy, smooth drinking any time of the year. I would say. Now, are these done in 53 gallon barrels or are they smaller barrels or what? Uh, no, they're, they're, they're standard barrel size. I can't remember. I think they are 53 gallon yeah, barrels. 53. Yeah. yeah. And then are you guys I'm looking, you guys I'm looking at one out? in the corner of my room over here? Well, some places worry, have, some, some places have success with like 30 gallon barrels and stuff like that, but most places do not. So I, I think that's where that question was coming from. Gotcha. A lot of new distillers, when they start, start out with the smaller barrels because they can do it in two years and, and it kind of, because it's more surface area, they get a little bit more of the barrel finish from a two year when they're first starting out. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, if we, Troy, can we go back to seeing everybody in one screen for me? Because what I'd like to do now is uh, go ahead and open up the floor for, for questions. Um, <clears throat> and what I'd like to do for questions so we don't have people talking over everybody is just go ahead and hold your glass up and I will call your name. Uh, and is that back to everybody? Uh, I only see you. Let me see. It depends on how your settings are set up. It, it mine pops through whoever's talking. Oh. There we go. Same. All right. Well, if I swap you're, it if back you're to on the right hand corner of your screen at the top, it should be a view button. Yep. And you change it back to gallery. Gallery. Yep. There you go. Come on, guys. This is 2022. We've been doing this for two years. <laughs> we, we, should, we should know Zoom through and through right now. Just so you know, this is our very first Zoom. So, so awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys letting me be a part of this. Ah, we're excited to be here. And what was your question again? Could you repeat what you what you wanted us to do, Wes? Uh, if, 
go ahead and just raise your, if you have a question, raise your glass up to your camera. And I will say, Ken, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, um, just a, a clarification. When you, when you started, um, you said that the state of Ohio required you to have your own product. Does that mean you can't source products at distilleries in the state of Ohio? No, so you don't actually have to have your own product. You have to have a product to present oh. to the state okay. of Ohio. Okay. Ryan? What's a bigger product for watershed? Is it the brandy or the bourbon, which is the main uh, focus? The four peeled gin is actually the biggest seller. And then our four year blended bourbon is running a close second. Kevin? So speaking of sourced bourbons, is the, are any, are all of these, um, all your product, are they sourced from other distilleries? Good question. Watershed Distillery has always made its own product um, throughout the entire time we've been open. Uh, when 20, when we all had to shut down at the beginning of 2020 uh, and had to go through that year of just absolute torture uh, that we're still in, uh, we went through quite a bit of product. So thank you everybody for drinking a lot more. We appreciate it if you were picking up our products and we really didn't have enough product to do what we wanted to do and we are open about it if you look on the back of one of our bottles it very clearly states distilled in in the two to it's a two to one ratio uh so two-thirds of this bottle that you pick up on the shelf is our product the other one is sourced And that is the only product that we source anything for. So, Kevin, do you have another question? Sure. So, right on along that vein, do you have plans for for anything like a ten year, like a twelve year, anything future? I can't speak on behalf of something that age, but uh, I will say that having a four year plus age statement on things. Um, will always be a consistent. So yes, we will always consistently have something four, five, six years old, uh, but there's been no determination on how old we will actually have a product uh, when it comes to our bourbons. Uh, Aaron? So do you guys have like uh, plans to do like single barrel releases or anything like that? Or are you guys always gonna stick to blending everything? So good question. We actually consistently do single barrel releases. Um, I don't know if you saw, we, we did release a single barrel that was done by Marion Eves. Uh, we only actually had roughly 70 bottles that were at our disposal to sell throughout our bottle shop. So we didn't advertise it uh, because we kind of wanted to do a little bit of a creating an underground buzz because we've done a collaboration with Marion Eves. And uh, that product is actually going to be coming out here soon. She did a special barrel blend for us, and that bottle is coming out. Uh, but aside from that, we do often do single barrel releases. Uh, the state of Ohio, back in 2021, did barrel picks. We released four single barrel bourbons under the OHLQ line. Uh, there was Ohio Honeycomb, Ambry Spice, Pilfer's Pick, and Dusty Bird. Um, and then later in the year, we all did a barrel pick. So we had the three different departments. Uh, we had the ladies of the distillery. We had the um, restaurant staff and we had the production team all pick a barrel. Uh, those three barrels were ODB, um, King Chambers and Sugar and Spice. And we released all of those at the distillery. So we frequently do single barrel select uh, and sell them out of our bottle shop uh, quite regularly. So uh, keep up on our social media pages, our Instagram, our Facebook pages. We are constantly announcing stuff like that when we do it on our storylines and so on. Um, our single barrel picks are pretty awesome. I think we actually still have a few of uh, the founders select sitting uh, in our bottle shop right now. That was actually Greg Lehman's pick, our owner. Hence why 
Founder Select. Ken, go for it. Brandon, you're yeah, next. Yeah, I'm. Um, um, I like all types of whiskeys, uh, and I really like to exper- uh, to try American single malts. Mm-hmm. Do you think uh, you guys will ever come out with a single malt product? I'm not sure. They have not given me uh, any information on that as of yet. So, Brandon. Uh, you mentioned that all of your products are planning to have an age statement. Is there a reason why you want to make sure that there's an age statement? So with the market the way it is, and this is more of me speaking out of kind of what I've seen from people. Um, age statements seem to have an impact in the market. If you see, you know, a five, a six, an eight year bourbon, you're more inclined to pick it up, look at it and give it a shot. Um, so as far as having that, like our, our original bourbon, it was a blend between two and four years um, in that product. And Watershed wants more consistency um, and more of a presence. So the four year, having that as our base, um, I think is definitely on their part a good move. But it's not all products across the board. We're talking bourbon right, specific. Right, yeah. uh, Christy, right? So I know you mentioned the Nachino. What's your favorite like cocktail or mixer to put it with since it's such kind of a unique um, item? That's funny. Uh, I work for a distillery so I can drink when I want. So uh, yeah, my morning coffee. <laughs> there are occasionally times I get on Zoom calls and they're like, uh, hey, Wes, what's in your coffee today? And I'm like, hey, Nochino. So the history on Nochino, actually, it's, it's quite funny. Uh, Nochino is very, very old uh, liqueur. It was actually dates all the way back to the Picts and the Pagans back in Europe. What they used to do is they used to gather up uh, all the black walnuts around the summer solstice time. Uh, they build fires around them to to ward off any of the witches and the goblins and the spirits. And then uh, they harvest those black walnuts. They'd make their nochino. And then during the summer solstice, they would get absolutely hammer drunk off of it and try and talk to goblins and witches. I mean, they, they definitely knew how to party. And I put quite frequently nochino into my, uh, my morning coffee. There has been some times on the weekends where I put it in my my coffee and I swear I was talking to goblins. It turned out to be my kids, but same thing. Uh, but how we actually came to uh, get Nochino is uh, apparently when you open up a distillery, you have quite a few people that will show up at your door and they'll go, hey, try this stuff I made in my bathtub. And you're like, hard pass. Uh, that's kind of what happened uh, with the Nochino minus the bathtub part. We had a gentleman by the name of Charlie who showed up to the distillery and he'd meet with Greg and he tried to get Greg to sample his, his Nochino. And, you know, Greg turned him down and said, you know, I don't want to try an alcohol that you've made in your house. It, it can be dangerous. Uh, if you're doing distillation in your home, you know, are you getting the bad stuff out? Um, is there a methanol content that I need to be worried about? So on and so forth. And Charlie goes, I'm sorry, I should have clarified. I buy the vodka from the store and I turn it into Nochino through a process. And he invited Greg over to his house to watch him make Nochino. And Greg agreed, went over, watched Charlie make this Nochino. And uh, then Charlie gave it to Greg to sample over some vanilla bean ice cream. Um, that is another way that you can enjoy Nochino is over some graters vanilla bean ice cream. It is... Uh, It's fantastic. Uh, Greg was sold. Charlie gave us his family recipe um, because he loved our distillery. He loved what Greg was doing. He loved the drive for the community, the love for the community. And he thought Greg was the best person and the best distillery for the job to make the Nochino famous. Um, Unless you have a nut allergy, I highly recommend you give it a shot. Uh, If you come on to one of the tours at Watershed Distillery, it is one of the things that you will sample on the tour, Uh, again, unless you have a nut allergy. And uh, more often than not, 
I, I actually, I have yet to, to hear somebody say, oh, that's just terrible. Most of the time it's thoroughly enjoyed. Um, it's almost like opening Christmas in a bottle. It smells so good. And yeah, I've added it to answer your question further. I've actually added it to Watershed Distillery has a pre-mixed old fashioned. Uh, and I've tried quite a few, you know, pre-mixed cocktails. Uh, majority of the time they're garbage and I don't like buying them. But uh, Watershed Old Fashioned, I tried it before I started with the distillery and I was rather impressed because I had not actually been able to make a better old fashioned myself. And I added the Nocino to that with a little more bourbon because you know, America and uh, it actually works really well and pairs really well with that. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Robert. So you talked about the Nocino and you talked about obviously the apple brandy. What other, what other liquors, you know, spirits that you, you guys have that are, you know, fun to try. I know this is a bourbon group, but I'm, I'm curious to see what else there is. Sure. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I have a lot of bourbon. I drink a lot of bourbon, but it's not the only thing I drink. Uh, so Watershed Distillery kind of makes a few products. And as I said in the beginning, we started off with making vodka and four peeled gin. Uh, we'll talk about the vodka. The vodka, um, basically you can make vodka out of anything. And we choose to make vodka out of 95% uh, Ohio corn and 5% Ohio apples. Uh, it's actually, I'm not a big vodka fan. I don't mind it. I can actually drink a little bit of it straight and not, you know, make a face. Uh, Uh, and those gins are our four peeled gin, named for the four peels of citrus. We actually use lemon, lime, orange, and grapefruit peels in the distillation process. Uh, we do it in our big uh, combination pot still. And so we have lemon, lime, orange, and grapefruit, coriander, juniper, allspice, and cinnamon. And we make our four peeled gin with that. Uh, then we take some of that product and we will barrel age the four peel gin for about a year. And it turns a little yellow. And we have our bourbon barrel four peel gin. And the last one we have is our guild gin. We remove the lime peels from that. We add nutmeg and rose hip. And we will make our gin and steep it in chamomile for two days. Uh, that one was actually taken out to the World uh, Wine and Spirits Competition in San Francisco, California in 2018. It was put in to compete with 200 plus other flavored gins in the flavored gin category. And it took home double gold that year in that competition. I'm not a big gin drinker, but that sounds amazing. Yeah, it, all three gins are amazing. Um, and that's a tall order for me to say, because I despise gin. I hate that. Oh my God, I just looked at Christmas tree. Uh, it's just that flavor profile does not work for me. But with that being said, when I go to Watershed Kitchen Bar um, and have dinner and grab a cocktail, I have yet to get any other cocktail but a four peeled gin cocktail. I have not had any of Watershed's bourbon cocktails on their menu. I've always had the gin cocktails. Um, so it, uh, it made me a believer. Matt Matt has a, a question. His arm's getting tired. Oh, okay, Matt, go for it. It's her. It's her. <laughs> hey there. Um, I want to know, do you have any idea when the next single barrels will be released? I do not at the moment. Um, I I haven't heard of any actual releases, but like I said, um, they, they normally, when we do a single barrel release that we've picked for the distillery, uh, they usually hang around for a few months. So you have plenty of time to get up and get in. But uh, yeah, the, the Facebook page and especially the Instagram page, Watershed Distillery and Watershed Kitchen and Bar will both tell you when they're coming. Okay, cool. I'll make sure I follow those. Thank you. Absolutely. Troy. So I know that 
we you guys are or watershed works with like blended but what is do you most distilleries are the you know they release what their mash bill is what's what's watershed's mash bill for their bourbon sure I'll, I'll, i'd love to talk about it so of course being the four year being a blended um it does have two different mash bills uh, but they're one off from each other but the watershed mash bill on that is going to be 71 percent corn 20 percent rye and nine percent malted barley uh the bottle and bond is oh, i'm sorry I messed up. That's the bottled and bonds mash bill. 71% corn, 20% rye, and 9% malted barley. Uh, the other one is 71% rye, 21, or 72% corn, 21% rye, 7% malted barley for the four year. Uh, and then the barrel strength is the same, uh, 72, 21, 7. Try it again. Um, so why did um, why is the apple brandy why like what why did Watershed settle on an apple brandy finish and not a you know a cigar blend or whatever other million finishes that are like why why was apple brandy their choice? Well, I mean, when you have those kind of products on hand, might as well see what happens. Like we had, we make apple brandy. We have apple brandy beers. Like we don't, a lot of people do port wine finishes. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't really think Greg was on the page of, you know, let's buy used wine barrels. Um, kind of looking around at what we had. And it's like, we have apple brandy barrels. Let's finish bourbon in them. See what happens. And I personally think that uh, the turnout of that was pretty well. Looking around to see if there's any other glasses up since I missed before. Is there is there anything else that uh, Watershed's like working on that's like a special release? Uh, well, I don't, I'm not asking that question to be like, hey, so we can go wait in line. But I know that like the Nocino uh, was a real big hit. Um, I didn't know if they had anything else planned down the road or if you know of anything that they're like experimental is what some distilleries call it. Yeah, well, so... I don't really know too much about the experimentals uh, that we're trying and the stuff that I do know about, of course, you know, I'm muzzled on it. Um, but there was one product that we did come out with at the end of last year that we didn't really promote too much of. Well, we promoted it a little bit, uh, but instead of making Nochino with vodka, we actually took bourbon and put it through the process to make Nochino and we called it Burchino. Um, I actually have a bottle of it on my, right beside my coffee maker. Shocker, right? And uh, it's fantastic. And I remember somebody said in here, they kind of liked the dry finish of the six year. Um, that Burchino kind of has that dry finish to it. It's, it's quite unique. Uh, it definitely is a one of a kind product that you're not going to find anywhere else. Uh, we are the only one who does that. Uh, there's quite a bit of it still uh, at the distillery uh, because they actually did make it make Burchino with three full bourbon barrels. So actually, give me a second. I'll grab the bottles. <clears throat> Just so everybody can take a look. So this is the Burchino bottle. If you can see it. Try not to. There we go. Ah. That's the Nocino bottle, quite dark, uh, looks, a lot of people go, oh, that looks like Jaeger. And I'm like, why did you just tell everybody that? Because now that's all they're going to think about. And it tastes nothing like it. Um, one of those kind of suggesting your palate to taste something, but it doesn't. Uh, and then this is our Burchino. Burchino comes in that beautiful black label. Um, again, very dark color because we are using uh, those black walnuts and it is barrel finished i don't mean to keep rapid fire in your questions man hey go for it that's what i'm here for does well, before you get off well wait wait Troy, before you get off the barchino so is it a bourbon put through the walnut process yes yep it's not it's, a a bourbon. Bourbon. it's not just barrel aged it's an actual bourbon 
No an chino. Actual- and is it put back in a barrel or is it just done? I'm pretty sure it's put back in the barrel. Interesting. So it's a double finish to an extent. Yeah. Okay. To an extent, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Interesting. Does Watershed, because they've been around for so long, do they, um, not they, do you, do you, well, yeah, do they source for any other distilleries? Like, um, I mean, not. Does it make sense what I'm asking? Like, yeah. Do, so, do other distilleries like that are startups? horse soldiers sourced from in, from Middle West to okay. do that? Uh, yeah, I understand your question. Um, not that I've heard. I have not heard that anybody has sourced from us. Um, whether I'm allowed to know that information or not, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have not heard of anybody sourcing from Watershed to do another product. Um, about as far as any sourcing goes, uh, was last year we did a Ohio Distillers Guild whiskey collaboration, and this bottle was born out of that. Um, this is bottle number 19 for the Ohio Whiskey Collab Batch 1. It's 121.2%, and on the side of it, it actually reads that in this batch blend, Watershed Distillery contributed 30%. High Bank Distillery contributed 30%. Middle West Spirits contributed 20%. And Echo Spirits, or Echo Spirits Distilling Company, produced or provided 20%. Uh, this is the first ever uh, Ohio Distillers whiskey collaboration that has happened. Uh, I'm actually personally hoping for more. Uh, because when we released this at the Craft Whiskey Festival, it actually sold out everything that was on premise that day. Uh, and then the rest that went to a um, OHLQ location on Polaris sold out within, I think, 36 hours after that. It moved rather quickly. And I don't know how I was lucky enough to get bottle number 19, but it just so happened. I walked in and there it was. So, uh, so when Ann left, who replaced Ann? Uh, we don't actually have a replacement for Ann because um, Watershed's gone through some changes. We've adjusted things and uh, kind of more of a disbursement of responsibility and keeping things internal. So, yeah, no, no, you you can't replace Ann Demma. <laughs> I agree. She's a pretty nice lady. She's fantastic. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, Matt, over here. Kathy. Kathy. So um, where do you age your bourbon? 1145 Chesapeake Avenue, Columbus, Ohio. So it's actually in Columbus. And when is the Craft Spirits Festival? That, I'm not sure if they have one on the dock for this year. Um, but the Craft we, uh, the the craft whiskey festival um it was in the f- closer to being in the fall last year into summer so that's usually about the time it is do you actually have a rick house in columbus so what we have um our distillery is located at 1145 uh, chesapeake avenue here in columbus and so on one side of the street you have our restaurant and distillery where our we make all the product you can see the uh Continuously operating column still and the fermenters through garage doors as you eat in the restaurant. It's pretty cool. And then on the other side of the street is where we have our warehouse. And it literally is an, it's an industrial park where we have our warehouse. Um, we, we age everything in top fill barrels, uh, stacked four to a pallet, four to five high uh, in that area. Uh, reason we do that is because we get just a little bit more square foot of storage out of that area um, and we're running the space. So to build ricks in a rented space would not only be a big investment, but not really necessary when we can get the exact same aging out of a top fill barrel. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. You'll find top fill barrels quite frequently in, younger companies 
and micro distilleries. It's, it's quite common to have top fills. Robert. Um, I know you have the, the Apple brandy. Have you, are you guys planning on doing any other different kinds for some different you know, variations on some of the finishes? Uh, on the finishes, not that I'm aware of yet. Um, so what we do, uh, we have the four-year apple brandy, the six-year apple brandy finished. Um, the other one, which is a once-a-year release uh, that is to the public lottery only, is going to be the Nochino finished. It's a five-year. Last year, it was a four-year. This year, it was a five-year uh, Nochino finished. So all of those used Nochino barrels, we will throw the bourbon in, age it for a couple of years in that Nochino barrel. And uh, that's the, this batch is batch two. It sits at 123.1 proof and it drinks like 112. Kathy, right? Are you saying three different, are you saying three different products? The Chino, the Chino and Porchino? So no Chino. Like, no, chi, no. Okay. Uh, burr chino, like burr, it's cold, chino. And burr then, chino. that's, yeah, the, no chino. No chino. Burr chino. Burr chino. And. Burr chino. This is a bourbon that has been finished in the no chino barrels. Okay. Do you mind going over that again as to what those barrels are? Meaning? Yeah. Well, the Chino parts. Oh. I mean, different liquors like, in each. Like, barrel it's, it's, like what, so, a, what a No Chino is. Yeah. No yeah. Chino is a black walnut vodka based liqueur. Okay. The Burr Chino is replacing vodka in that process and using bourbon instead. And then the five year, like I said, this is a bourbon that has been taken out of its barrel and put into a used Nochino barrel. It's just a bourbon thing. Okay, cool. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for me? Uh, if not, I am going to thank you guys very much for letting me join and uh, walk you guys through the tasting, talk about Watershed tonight. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, would like to schedule a tour and do a walkthrough with me, um, please email me. Uh, if you want, my email is Wes, like the direction without the T at watersheddistillery.com. Just let me know in here. I'll actually put it in the chat for you so you can. Yep, there it is. Thanks, Troy. Real quick, that is my email you. in the chat. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, feel free anytime you'd like. Uh, just reach out. Tell me, you know, uh, Jim City. Um, and I'll take care of you. Uh, I saw a question. What, I just saw a question. Hold on. I'm scroll up. What kind of Oldsmobile do you have? Uh, so you notice the tattoo. Uh, who was it that noticed the tattoo? Brian did. Brian Baird. Brian noticed it? All right. Um, okay. So I am uh, I'm an Oldsmobile fanatic. And I have, uh, I have multiple. Um, I have a 1968 Cutlass S. Um, my dad has a 1969 Hearst Olds, a 1974 42 W30. Both of us have, I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but he's got a 92 Achieva SCX. I have a 93 Achieva SCX. Uh, I have a 1988 Olds Calais. I have a 1984 Olds Cutlass Calais. Uh, I have a 2004 Bravada. I have a 1996 Oldsmobile Silhouette minivan. My dad has two... Uh, my dad has a 90, 97 Aurora, 
Oldsmobile Aurora with the Autobahn package and a 98 Almost Aurora. Uh, yeah. My first my first car was a G-Body. So I had yeah, a G-Body. Love the G-Body. Yeah. That Aurora probably hauls. Uh, it floats. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, but yeah, my G-Body, uh, my, my 84 G-Body Cutlass, uh, it's a T-top car. It's fully loaded. Nice. It even has light monitors on the front fenders. Nice, man. Yeah, I had, an 80, I had an 87 for my first car, and then I crashed it. And then I had an 88 for my second car, and then I blew the lower manifold out. So, And now they're collector's items. <laughs> right. Well, so. if, if nobody has – does anybody else have any other questions for Wes? Nobody? None? You said you were there on Fridays for the tours? I am there. Fridays at 7.30 is when I give my tours. I only I usually only do one tour a week uh, just because of my sales schedule. And I travel through the Dayton and Cincinnati areas quite frequently. Um, I spend multiple days down in Cincinnati uh, covering that market. I deal with all of the uh, all the liquor stores, all OHLQ locations. So you said you do like tastings at some of these places, too? Yes, I do tastings at some of uh, some of the liquor stores. So Kroger's here in Columbus, uh, private liquor stores, anybody who has a high proof tasting license um, and will allow us to do a tasting. I do tastings. Anybody else? All right. Hey, Wes, I want to thank you for your time tonight. Um, Nobody, if anybody has questions, you can email Wes directly. That email is dropped in the chat too as well. But if you guys want to stick around for a minute, I'll give out this bottle of the four-year apple brandy and uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Or if you want to Everybody, stick thank you so much for letting me be a part of this tonight. I hope you enjoyed your time and uh, be safe. And I hope you guys aren't snowed in like we are. <laughs> we are. Cheers. All thanks, right. Wes. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Wes. Thanks, Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, Wes, when you're in Dayton, make sure you come by our little uh, bourbon bar. <laughs> you got it. Send me an email. I'll make sure I make a trip by. I'll, br I'll, bring a, uh, I'll, I'll bring a sample gift with me. Oh, thank you. Well, then you can come yeah. over to our house, too. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> hey, for everyone's always a good place to visit. Yep. You guys are damn. Everybody take care. Thank you so much. Thanks, Wes.